Hello. My name is Shannon Nicole Kringen, and uh, it is July 22nd, 2021. It is 10.50 a.m. I am feeling self-abandonment got me stranded again, polluted and uprooted. I'm feeling the need to listen to myself, but I'm afraid that that's narcissism. But people that are educated about psychological identity have told me that if I question being narcissistic, I'm probably not. Because if I truly was a narcissist, I would just laugh and think, I'm, I'm not a narcissist. And I would just probably blame somebody else for whatever's wrong with me or my life. Because that's one thing narcissists are known for doing is, is blaming, pointing the finger at other people and never thinking that they make mistakes. Because I know the reality is everybody makes mistakes. So I, this weekend, went to an art car show. I was part of an art car show. I have um, a black Honda Fit 2010 that I converted into an art car by gluing many beautiful rhinestones onto it. And the people there were nice, creative, interesting people. I'm very sensitive to ego, to my own ego, to other people's ego. It's a long story. Nothing negative happened other than thoughts and feelings in my head that are hard to deal with. So I'm feeling a strange sense of deja vu. I don't know if that's the right term, deja vu. When I was a little kid, we grew up in San Diego. I grew up, not we. I'm an only child. I'm an only child of parents who divorced when I was four. Um, and I was neglected to some extent because my parents had me when they were young and they were both trying to figure out their career and their love lives. Um, they didn't really belong together, so they toughed their marriage out for four years and then divorced, but um, they probably never, never should have gotten married. They only got married because of me. They got pregnant with me and dropped out of college and got married, and then they just tried to make it work for four years and then got divorced, and then I saw my dad on weekends, um, and I'm an only child, and it's true that my parents uh, divorced when I was four and I was an only child of them, but I'm also an only child. Like my mom and dad, neither one of them had kids with other people, which is probably also unusual because maybe when parents get divorced, they usually get married to other people and then have kids. My parents, neither one of them ever had kids again. So my mom got married four times and um, my dad got married one second time but that's a whole nother story. That's, that's not relevant to this video. I'm just documenting how I feel. I'm feeling really down on myself. I feel like I am a talented artist, but I, I'm so angry. I have never felt comfortable being confident. I feel the opposite. You know, some kids are told by their parents that they should be doctors or lawyers or be really successful and they feel pressure from their parents as if they're not going to be loved or approved of unless they succeed and accomplish lots of goals and accomplish a lot. I feel the opposite. I feel like I'm afraid of being successful. I'm afraid that it's selfish and egotistical and I would be an egomaniac because both my parents criticize successful people. My dad would say certain artists, my dad was a, a tennis teacher and he wrote comedy and music, but had stage fright. So my dad has a lot of talent that he's never fully actualized. My mom is a visual artist who studies Eastern philosophy. But both my parents are sensitive, intelligent, talented people, but both of them, in my opinion, have a very negative, um, relationship to success, so-called success. And when I, when I say success, 
I'm a very complicated person. And so when I say success, I mean the full spectrum of success, which would be external success, like you can make a living doing what you're talented at, whether it's comedy, music, athletics, art, science, medicine, whatever, whatever your passion is in life, working with dogs, I mean, any kind of vocation, if somebody can make a living doing what they enjoy and what they're talented at naturally and intrinsically and instinctually, if to me, that is external success. If you can actually do what you love and make a living from doing it, even if it's being a housewife and a homemaker, if you love to get married and have kids and you're good at that, that's success to me. Ex that's external success. Internal success would be more you're doing what you love, even if you're not making a living at it, if you somehow can survive financially, whether you're doing your passion for a living or not, but if you're happy with your internal self, whether you get external success or not. So success can be internal and external and both. I grew up feeling ashamed that I was even born. And I know I've probably said this on videos before, but I'm really conscious of it right now because I'm 52 years old right now. I don't have any makeup on. I'm letting my hair grow out naturally. I'm watching the silver streaks come in and I like that. Uh, my hair is kind of a dark ash blonde, I think. I don't even know what my natural hair color. My eyes are kind of a greenish grayish bluish hazel. Uh, I have freckles and I'm 52. I designed and silk screened this t-shirt um somebody commissioned me to paint this hat i'm going to paint this hat for a lady who commissioned me to paint it i'm excited about that so i was uh here's here's there here's a self-portrait and i painted my face that's my own style of design so goddess kring is my persona that i invented Partly to kind of cheer myself up and try to feel more like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz that has her own power. So I feel like I'm afraid of success. I'm afraid of if I'm so when I'm around other people, I shrink. People who admire my talent. Well, some people actually think I'm a narcissist. If you go to my website, shannonkringen.com, and you find my photos on Flickr, you will see like 900, like literally, I think one of my albums has 900 self-portraits. And so I have created lots of beautiful self-portraits here. I'll show you. Behind uh, me on the wall, artist Shannon Kringen. And there's like, there's like, those are all self-portraits and then hand-painted shoes that I created. I'll try to hold this more still. So these are some beautiful, you know, I think my self portraits are beautiful artwork, the black and white one that was at the triple door restroom here in Seattle, beautiful lighting. Um, the one in the lower middle is me underwater in a swimming pool in the Bahamas. Uh, the one on the lower left is when I was going to ride in a in a body painted bike ride pride ride body pride ride here in Seattle. And I painted my face and then hand painted shoes on the top left and hand painted shoes on the top right. One pair of shoes was for Tori Amos in that shot. And then in the top center is a black and white self portrait and then superimposed digitally with a print that I made at Pratt Fine Art Center here in Seattle. So that's kind of some of my multimedia art. And I'm really self-conscious. I feel defensive about who I am and what I want. I don't even know what I want half the time. I need to give myself credit for being so good at surviving. Um, as a little kid, I felt ashamed that I was even born. And I thought I was sort of over that because I know that everybody is, is like meant to be, everyone that exists is meant to be because they're here on this planet. I'm feeling angry and defensive and self-conscious and like I'm so angry I feel trapped like I can't succeed and 
what does it even mean for me to succeed? What would that mean? Would that mean because I'm a successful art model? I've been art modeling since 1992 here in Seattle and people still hire me to art model and I'm really grateful. I won't say that that's my real passion. My real passion is probably my own artwork. But then the fact that I take self portraits like modeling for myself is kind of so modeling is its own art whether I model for other painters, uh, photographers, uh, people who draw, you know, drawers, painters, photographers, sculptors, and I model for myself. When I do my self portraits, I consider that I'm the photographer and the model and the actor, the performer, whatever you want to call that. Because when I model for myself, I feel like I'm trying to express different sides of my personality that want to come out and I'm kind of shy and I feel so misunderstood. I feel like some people have known me for years and they're like, oh, I didn't know you were shy. I'm like, what are you talking about? But I guess if you witness me in a social group, you will see that I'm quiet, withdrawn and shy and afraid to talk. That's partly why I did my TV show, Goddess Kring, because I, for some reason, have the guts to talk into the camera and do monologues when I'm by myself but I'm really shy and insecure socially. And so when I was in the group for this art car show, I met lots of creative, interesting people who did art cars and they kept asking me to sit with them and I was uncomfortable and didn't wanna sit with them and I didn't handle it well. I just didn't really answer. I just went, oh, thanks, oh, thanks, oh, thanks, but I never sat with them. And so I don't know if they think that I was a snob or they probably wondered why is she not sitting with us? Why does she not want to sit with us? And so it, I feel like ashamed and uncomfortable about that. And then I went and did a camp out at a really cool place called Rangerville, this really cool guy named Ranger who has a, a, a famous art car named Toyota. It's this cool old Toyota truck that's got kids toys glued all over it. And then it has a bubble machine in the back and it's just a really fun whimsical car. And he's the main guy who organized this art car event that was at a car dealership in Burlington, Washington. And then he lives nearby in Bow, Washington on this amazing uh, property in the forest with lots of artwork and dwellings and outhouses and funky like an old school bus that's all painted and converted into a stage. And it was just, it was a great experience in terms of my boyfriend and I slept in a Winnebago on the property. He invited us and all these other people, we were all camping out together and there was music and beautiful lights. And it was beautiful on that level. Like artistically, I liked being with the art car people. I liked hearing a magic show and live music. My boyfriend and I spent the night there. Um, with all these other nice people. We had a potluck -like dinner. We had uh, breakfast together the next day. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, on an external level, it all seems great. But internally, I felt shy, uncomfortable, defensive, self-conscious, misunderstood. Like I wanted to get to know people, but I was too shy. I talked to a few people. Some people uh, talked to me and sort of brought me out of my shell a little bit. I'm embarrassed that I need people to, to bring me out of my shell. Um, I just feel a sense of shame. I like to say, tame the shame, suck the sugar cane. Last night I got mad and I was in my creative writing group last night and I left. I just unplugged my camera because somebody said something about medicine that pissed me off and I felt defensive. And so I said something. I won't say what that is right now because it's a topic that is not allowed to be spoken. It's, you know, cancel culture, virtue signals, very popular right now. And I won't talk about it. I'll just say that I had a different opinion than some of the other people in my creative writing group. And so I said something and then I unplugged my camera and left abruptly. And I feel embarrassed about that and ashamed about that. Um, I, I know, and I know that feeling ashamed for me to feel ashamed is not helping the world, but I don't know how not to feel this way. So I'm just sh sharing how I feel. I'm a left-handed only child, Scorpio, earth monkey, whatever. Um, 
So my mom and I lived in Petaluma, California when I was nine on a hippie commune briefly before we decided to come up to Washington. And so when I went to the art car event and camped out with these other people, there were two nine-year-old kids running around. And it made me think of myself being a nine-year-old and running around with my mom's boyfriend's son who was also nine. So it reminded me of my childhood and I was thinking, this is weird, like to be 52 years old and see a little nine-year-old kid and ask, I asked her what her age was and she's like, oh, we're both nine. And I was like, oh my God, that was the age that I was when I was running around on a sort of hippie commune kind of a place. And so it was just giving me some perspective on how, how young and innocent a nine-year-old looks. And yet I remember when I was nine, I was thinking all kinds of deep thoughts and, and I was making out with my nine-year-old friend. My, I had a crush on my mom's boyfriend's son and I felt lonely and ignored. I, didn't, I wasn't getting as much attention from my mom as I wanted. And I was missing my dad and my grandparents and missing San Diego. And one night I overheard my mom and her boyfriend being X-rated in the bedroom and it scared me because I didn't know what that sound was. And then my mom's uh, boyfriend's son, who was also nine, we were both nine-year-olds. He's like, oh, you know, they're doing, you know, they're making whoopee, you know, whatever you want to say. And, uh, and I was like, oh my God, I didn't know adults made that kind of sound. I knew I knew the birds and the bees and all that, but I didn't know that adults made those weird sounds that sounded almost like, I thought my mom was being strangled or something, but that wasn't the case, obviously. My mom didn't handle it very well. She just went, go back to bed, everything's fine. We're just being adults or whatever. And that's fine, but I felt dismissed. I felt unimportant. I felt like I wanted my mom to reassure me a little more that everything was okay. I felt abandoned, ignored, missed my dad, missed my grandparents. I was really uncomfortable. And then my mom's boyfriend's son, his name was Demetrius. He's like, oh, well, they're just making whoopee. And I said, oh, well, let's try to make whoopee. And so, and so thankfully he was nine years old. And so we were both nine-year-olds together exploring the birds and the bees together. So mostly we just made quesadillas and built forts together. But um, I remember thinking that fine, if my mom isn't gonna pay attention to me, then at least I can have a boyfriend my own age. So. That's just some of the feelings that came up for me. And then when I saw these two nine-year-old kids that were good friends, I was just feeling like, wow, nine-year-olds are younger than I thought. Although those kid, these kids looked happy and smart and healthy. They looked like they were doing well and um, probably well cared for. But I just remember running around as a nine-year-old and my mom was just kind of letting me run wild and free. And you, I was using a jigsaw and uh, I could have cut my hand off, but I never did. Uh, I never injured myself with a jigsaw, but I was like alone using a jigsaw with safety goggles in this art studio. I, the adults around me taught me how to work with clay and metal and silk screen and um, wood and paint. And I did lots of different art. My mom was running around with her boyfriend doing Raku uh, kiln uh, clay stuff. And that, my mom's favorite thing is clay and metal. and. So my mom was doing art with her boyfriend and I was doing art in my own way. And my mom wasn't really aware of what I was doing because she was caught up with her boyfriend and probably having fun with him. And um, I just remember feeling kind of ignored and um, left out excluded. And I remember I would come home from school and say, mommy, I feel left out. Mommy, I feel excluded at school socially. But I think I also felt left out and excluded at home in my family. I'm an only child of divorced parents. And I went back and forth between my mom and my dad and my grandparents. And I think I felt kind of like not important. And I don't know how much of this was the fact that I'm an introvert and kind of shy. And the fact that I was neglected by the adults around me and invalidated. So maybe I withdrew even more. Like in other words, if I had had a more loving, nurturing, affectionate family, maybe I would have been more drawn out of my shell. So I don't know how much of my withdrawing into myself was a reaction to the dysfunction of my childhood and my family, or how much of that was just my nature of being kind of a sensitive, introverted person who loves plants and animals. And quite honestly, I'm 
better with plants and animals and solitude than I am in social groups. So as much as I love being with the other art car people, I partly was irritated and I partly feel irritated when I'm with groups of people. And like there's this group thing and this this uh, this this uh, pressure to conform. And even though we were a bunch of art car people, creative artists together, I don't know actually if some of the art car people are actual artists. I'm an actual artist that designs things and does artwork. And so I just think of my art car as a as an extension of my other multimedia art that I do. I don't know if all of the other art car people are artists. I didn't, I didn't really get to know them. They probably think that I'm not friendly or I'm, I don't know if they pick up that I'm shy and insecure. Maybe they think I'm a narcissist. Maybe they just think I'm a snob. I have no idea what they think, but um, do I like them? I, I need to ask myself, I'm all worried about what they think of me. What did I think of them? Did I like them? I mean, they're creative people. I do sense of, uh, um, there's ego and competition between creative people and everyone wants to kind of, you know, win a prize and be the best or whatever. And I, I'm not comfortable with that, but maybe that's partly my ego. So I'm just sharing that I feel a sense like self-abandonment got me stranded again, polluted and uprooted. And then I have people telling me that I should don't isolate, don't be alone all the time, hang out with other people. But then when I'm around other people, that's the problem. I probably am lonely. The problem is when I'm around other people, I withdraw into myself and I feel like my job is to be a chameleon for the other person. So then I'm irritated and frustrated. So I don't really enjoy being with other people most of the time. That is actually quite sad. That's a kind of a catch 22 because there's nothing wrong with liking solitude. I'm an introvert. I'm left-handed. I like being alone or I'm with plants and animals and my cat. I don't really feel alone. I feel like when I'm in the forest, when I'm with plants and animals, I'm with plants and animals. I'm not just by myself, but I'm not around other humans. So some of my best times have been by myself with not with other humans, with my artwork, with a movie or music, with plants and animals, not with other people. I've had very few amazingly great times with other humans. Not that I couldn't learn to do that, but I'm 52. So maybe if I had had a child, uh, I almost had a child in my 20s and then I changed my mind long traumatic story, don't want to talk about it. It was very sad, but I made a choice and I never became a mother. And I was so traumatized and upset by that choice that I never allowed myself to get pregnant ever again. So, um, because it was such a hard decision to say no to that. So, and I'll always wonder what if, but um, I'm here now and I don't know. So I feel, angry when people tell me you need to learn how to participate in groups more and it's like okay i try uh, i'm comfortable being an art model with a group of artists who draw me and paint me because i feel like i know what my role is in that group but in a lot of group situations i feel defensive competitive like other people are going to make fun of me or pick on me because i was picked on as a kid um so I don't know how to feel comfortable in a group. And maybe I don't ever need to learn that, or maybe I could learn how to do that, but I don't wanna be fake. I immediately start feeling angry when I think about, Shannon should join groups more, you know, cause other people have told me that you should do this, you should do that. And it's like, okay, wait a minute. Maybe I should listen to myself and do what I love. Maybe that's the best advice, not to try to make myself conform. So I just wanted to share how I feel today. It's. Once again, it's July 22nd, 2021. Now it's 11.14 a.m. Just wanted to share how I feel. This is Shannon Kringen. Uh, my website is shannonkringen.com. My name is Shannon Nicole Kringen. That's why on some social media sites, I go by Nicole Kringen. Um, so thank you for listening. I hope you're having a good day. I hope you got something out of this. Maybe this is just my own narcissism. I don't know, but I hope you got something out of it. Cause you know, I'm, I'm tired of putting myself down. Like. 
the most important relationship we have is with ourselves. Like if I can't learn to love myself, how am I going to love other people anyway? So, so I'm trying to figure out how to be okay with myself and figure out what is it that I want to do with other people, if anything. Uh, do I really want to interact with other people in a, in a lot of close ways? I had a massage a few days ago. I loved that. Uh, I've been dating a guy for six or seven years and we don't, we're not really compatible in a lot of ways, but we sort of click in a certain way, mostly physically, you know, romantically we click, um, but we don't really, I don't know, we, we're very different. So uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. It's, um, I have some friends. I mostly model for artists. I'm walking some dogs for a lady. Uh, that's a new thing for me. I'm walking dogs. Uh, maybe I should do more of that. I love being with animals. I love plants and animals. Uh, I also want to learn to love and accept myself and not think I have to change. I always feel pressure. Like I can't be who I am. I have to be, and I have to do so. I have to, that's probably from my childhood. I, I feel like both my parents were critical they're both very critical people and maybe both of them are kind of perfectionists in a way. So I felt like I was very self-conscious about what I should and shouldn't do according to what my parents. So I still feel trapped in some kind of what would my mom think? What would my dad think? It, which is embarrassing to say as a 52 year old, but I never had kids. So maybe if I had given birth to a child, I would have learned to grow beyond all of this. Uh, mostly I've just had cats and house plants. As you can see, I have lots of plants. I love plants. I absolutely love plants and animals. And um, so whatever. Um, okay. I'm an artist. I'm a model. I'm sensitive. And I'm uh, maybe I'm so sensitive that I'm insensitive because I feel like people that are highly sensitive I think get overwhelmed and then they whoosh, shut down. And so if you're really sensitive in one way, you might be insensitive in another way. Because the people at the art car show kept saying, come sit with us, come sit with us, come sit with us. And I I, I wanted, I should have said, I'm sorry, I'm really socially uncomfortable. I have too much anxiety. I'm sorry. Thanks for being friendly, but I have anxiety. I should have just said that. And then they can just go ahead and judge me for that if they want. But at least then I, they would understand, oh, she has some kind of weird anxiety problem. Okay. Instead of feeling like I was rejecting them. Because I appreciate they were asking me to come sit with them, but I just felt really uncomfortable. And so I didn't. I just walked around all day for six hours, literally. Uh, and then I sat in my car by myself. <laughs> So there it is. So, okay. So this is Shannon Kringen just signing off for now. Thanks for listening. My website, shannonkringen.com. You can support me on Patreon. You can just Google my name and find my artwork and my music and my poetry and my visual art and um, all the different things that I do. My work as a model. Thanks for listening. Have a good day or night. Follow your heart and follow your bliss. That's, that's a, and I seal it with a kiss. That's my advice to myself. And my advice to you is do more of what you love and go ahead and say no to what you don't love. There it is. Bye for now.